I bet she does anal. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, let's crack on. I have been living in the UK for a long time now, and this is a very confusing place to live. Because you Brits never say what you mean. Okay? So I'm going to share with you my interpretive guide to how to talk British. Now, if a Brit says, it's not ideal, that means their mother has died. <laughs> if they say, it's less than perfect, their brother has fucked their wife. <laughs> but if a Brit says, it's a bloody nightmare, that means there's 3% left on their phone. <laughs> or the Wi-Fi's gone out. Or Prince Andrew's become the next Blue Peter presenter. <laughs> now, in Ohio, where I come from, when someone says it's a bloody nightmare, that means there's been a mass shooting. <laughs> and when the police turn up, they get hit by a Category 5 tornado. <laughs> so, where I come from, um, there are a lot of people who believe the Earth is flat. Uh-huh, yeah, I don't get it. I mean, come on, we've known the world is round since the Greeks, right? Okay, imagine being a Greek 3,000 years ago. You're there, you're wearing a bed sheet, your buildings are in ruins, your wife's a small boy. <laughs> and yet, you're still clever that millions of people today believe the world is flat. <laughs> There are people who have all of human knowledge in the palm of their hand and go, no, no, not for me. I'd rather get my news from my neighbor's cousin on Facebook. <laughs> Edison, Da Vinci, Marie Curie, would they have bothered if they'd known they could be swiped in favor of a cat playing the piano? <laughs> would Newton have given a shit about gravity? All right, gravity sucks because as we get older, everything droops. <laughs> so fuck Newton. <laughs> uh, I was back in my hometown in Ohio this past summer, and I took my bicycle down to the gas station to pump up the tires with air. I was trying to be a little more green. And get this, the price of air has gone up. <laughs> Guys, you know this? The stuff you're breathing now more expensive than it used to be. <laughs> it was always 50 cents to pump up my tires. Now it's a buck 50. Yes, that's inflation. <laughs> you know, if I wanted to pay more for hot air, I'd call that guy from Hinge <laughs> and cut to the chase. Hi, Scott. I was wondering if you fancied a shag behind a dumpster. Oh, you're looking for something more casual than that. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I gotta tell you, I resent being called a pig. I don't chase younger men. I train them. <laughs> I give notes, and then I release them back into the community <laughs> for the benefit of younger women. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome, ladies. When you spend the night with a man who knows how to use his tongue, and you're on your eighth orgasm of the evening. It won't be God's name, you'll be screaming. It'll be mine. <laughs> uh, a couple of years ago, when I was living in North London, um, my flat burnt down. True story. I, I survived, obviously. Um, but the fire started so quickly, I only had time to grab my three most important possessions. My phone, my laptop, my vibrator. <laughs> and I thought, actually, I better take my son too. <laughs> now my son is now 21 and um, he asked me recently, he goes, Mom, how do you know when you're really in love? <laughs> I was like, what are you, French? Grow a pair. <laughs> He's not your typical young guy. He doesn't drink or do drugs. He spends his time sewing and reading Plato. I mean, here's the thing. I didn't want a clever son. You think you want one, but you don't. You want them to be clever when they're five, not when they're 21. You don't want advice from someone who's been inside you. <laughs> You'll ask me questions like, 
Mom, have you found the confluence between work, passion, and service to humanity to be rewarding? Oh. I haven't found the meaning of what you just said. I stand up in front of people and tell anal jokes. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't want to brag, but it seems like I've created a man vastly superior to any man I've ever dated. Okay, I'm not going to go all Donald Trump on you wanting to shag his own kid. <laughs> but I have created a man that I personally would like to meet an older version of out in the world. Oh, she wants to shag her son. Meet him before you judge. <laughs> Relax. You know, once you've shot a baby out of your panani, raised it from stinky nappies and breastfed it, the last thing you want to do is shag it. <laughs> all right, folks. So I, um, I know the hashtag Me Too movement has been very important for us. You know, I've, I've been a supporter. But us middle-aged ladies over here are like, what about the Fuck Me Too movement? <laughs> now that's a movement I can get behind. Or in front of. Or bent over the kitchen table. <laughs> I was on the tube recently, and I was smiling back at a good-looking guy my age who was smiling at me. I was like, ooh, he's into me. And then I looked to my left and realized he's smiling at the 20-something next to me. Of course he is. I mean, what's stupider, that I would think I have a chance with him or that he thinks he has a chance with her. <laughs> Who is the deluded one here? <laughs> and meanwhile, this 23-year-old chick is looking at the cute 23-year-old guy over here, who's looking at the hot young guy over here. We're all not happy. <laughs> and I look down to my right, and there's a 75-year-old guy eyeballing me. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> Let's go, Grandpa. <laughs> When an older man comes up to me now, I don't know if he wants to date me or he wants my seat. <laughs> and when a younger guy's interested in me, I'm like, oh, he's probably trying to scam me. Or he's got mother issues. Or maybe it's a bet. But that's okay. I will help him win that bet. <laughs> Holly Hudson, you guys have been lovely. Thank you so 